Hello folks and welcome to the screencast that introduces you to some of the terms that will help us organize the human body for study. These are terms we're going to need to learn and use right off the bat. Just like many other specialties, you need to learn the jargon so that you can better communicate to other people about your understanding. First, let's start with the anatomical position. Here it is, standing upright, palms facing anteriorly. That means toward the front. This position is, is the standard position we use as a reference to where all other body parts are, are located. Next, let's learn some directional terms. We start with the reference point being the midline of the body as seen right here. When referring to a point on the body in, the, in relation to the midline, we use the terms medial and lateral. For example, the heart is medial to the lungs or the lungs are lateral to the heart. We use the term superior to refer to a body part that's above another that's inferior. Of course, left and right seem simple enough, but remember, we need to refer to the subject's left or right, not yours. There have been many issues on the operating table or the dentist chair where practic practitioners have made this mistake and things have gone really, really wrong. The proximal and distal are used on the appendages. Proximal refers to the parts that are closer to the origin of the appendage, while distal refers to parts further away from the origin. For example, we, we would say that the wrist is distal in relation to the elbow, or that the elbow is proximal with respect to the wrist. Here it is on the legs as well. Can you come up with an example that describes the location of two body parts relative to one another on the leg? Is the knee proximal or distal in relation to the ankles? I hope you said that the knees are proximal in relation to the ankles. Last, we have anterior and posterior. Anterior referring to the front half of the body and posterior being the back. There are other terms that mean the same thing and are used interchangeably with anterior and posterior. They are ventral and dorsal. Ventral is the same as anterior, while dorsal is the same as posterior. So try to remember that if you see these terms being used, that they are the same thing. Dorsal and ventral are more often used on organisms that are oriented horizontally with relation to the ground, such as a four-legged animal or a fish. Okay, so let's divide the body in its three-dimensional terms and name them. First here we have the sagittal plane, that divides the body into the left and right the transverse plane, and the coronal plane. These also help us communicate the location of certain body parts. The sagittal plane divides the body into left and right sides. The transverse plane divides the body into superior and inferior parts, while the coronal plane divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. Now in healthcare, it's important to communicate the location of injuries and ailments that occur in the abdominal and pelvic regions. There are many organs here, and when something goes wrong, care providers need to be able to communicate to the patient and to other care providers as to where the pain or ailment might be. First, we'll start with the nine abdominal pelvic regions. Starting up here is the right hypochondriac, here is the right lumbar, and below that is the right iliac. Mirrored on the opposite side are the left hypochondriac, the right lumbar, and the right iliac. Back to the middle we have the epigastric, the umbilical, and the hypogastric regions. Now a simple more general division of the abdominal pelvic regions are the abdominal pelvic quadrants. These are more often used uh, by emergency care providers to very quickly designate where an ailment or an injury might be. And these are simple. Here we have the right upper quadrant, and the right lower quadrant. Over here, the left upper quadrant and the left up lower quadrant. It's as simple as that. Now, let's make a sagittal section through the body, empty out the organs, and name the major cavities of the body. Using some of our directional terms, we'll divide the cavities into two major groups. The dorsal cavity on the dorsal side of the body. This includes the cranial for the brain and the spinal cavity for the spinal cord. The other division is the ventral cavities, which include the thoracic for the heart and lungs. This cavity is separated by the cavity below it by the diaphragm, a muscle that helps us breathe. 
The abdominal cavity is the one below it and contains the stomach, liver, and intestines. At the bottom we have the pelvic cavity, which contains the lower small intestine, the rectum, and the internal female reproductive parts. Because the abdominal and pelvic cavities are not divided by any real structure, they're often just referred to as the single abdominal pelvic cavity. I should mention some other cavities up here in the facial region that are not necessarily associated with either the ventral or dorsal cavities. They're the nasal and oral cavities. Unlike the other cavities, these are open to the outside of the body. Now, these cavities are lined with a thin membrane that, although thin, plays an important role in protecting your, the organs as they move inside the body. The name for the membrane in the abdominal pelvic cavity is the peritoneum, shown here in the red lining of the cavity. Now, the organs seem to originate from the posterior of the cavity and are sort of pushed into the membrane and the cavity. This creates a double layer between the organs and the cavity wall. The layer on the cavity wall is called the parietal peritoneum, while that on the surface of the organs is called the visceral peritoneum. The way in which this double layer protects is by producing a viscous fluid called serous fluid in the space between the two layers. This helps reduce the friction on organs moving inside the cavities. Take a look at the sagittal section where the membrane is outlined in blue. In the thoracic region, the membrane is called the pleura. It does the same job here, as the lungs are always moving. The pleural cavity is the space between the two membranes, and that's where the serous fluid would be. The heart has its own double membrane as well, called the pericardium. The space between the two membranes is called the pericardial cavity. Well, I think that's enough for now. So. Get your diagrams ready, rewind this video, and prepare to pause it to help you fill in your diagrams. If you have any questions, use the Submit Questions section of the web page just below the video. We'll discuss these questions in class. Until then, study your diagrams and see you back in class.